Assalamualaikum. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Junaid Rahim. My name is Muhammad Yusuf Bashforth. And together we're affectionately known as the two white Muslims. <laughs> But you know that already. Oh, uh, So that. welcome once again in this Facebook Live episode. Uh, we're going to discuss a little bit more about Ramadan uh, as we prepare for the Blessed Month, which is going to begin this week, inshallah. Wow. We want to look a little closer at something that we should all be doing during this Blessed Month, inshallah. Yes, yeah, yes. Um, <clears throat> fundamentally, what we should be doing is kind of setting aside strict times for reading the Quran. Uh, it's one of those things that we, you know, if, if it's not something that we do very often, we just need to start scheduling time. We need to do that every day during Ramadan. It's a month to really connect with the Quran. For some Muslims, something really magical happens when they take the Quran off the shelf. There's a spark, there is a warmth, an iman rush that boosts with every ayah that they read. I mean, this is Allah talking to me, to us directly. I've never felt so close to my Lord Allah as I do when I read the Quran. Does all this sound familiar to you? I hope so. The fact is, though, for some of us, that just doesn't happen. We want it to, but it maybe doesn't have that effect. We pick up the Quran, we maybe fumble through some of the Arabic, uh, dare I say it, with a bit of clumsy tajweed. We maybe lose ourselves in a tangle of translations and meanings with maybe no idea how they relate, relate specifically to what it is that we're doing in our lives today. And as a result, we might start telling ourselves off, uh, yes, I believe in Allah, his might, his mercy. So why can't I connect with what he's saying? He's trading just to me. Why is it not getting through? Is there something wrong with me? Maybe Allah doesn't even want me to connect with him. Uh, we start to feel excluded. Um, I don't know, maybe just feel a little pushed away. Um, we may be out of what we might consider to be the inner circle of those people who are in the know with super high Iman and practical Islamic knowledge. So maybe we fall into a little bit of an Iman low. The guilt can take over and maybe we start moving away from instead of towards the Quran. That's true for some people. Fortunately, Allah gives us this beautiful month every year called Ramadan. It's a month where we're given the opportunity to realign our spiritual focus. Junaid, what do we always call it? <laughs> it's, it's the a, reset button for our Dean. A reset button indeed for our Dean. Now, can you think of any other time where you would deprive yourself of sleep, food, water, intimacy, bad language? I mean, it's hard to ask those things, but mm. in Ramadan, we do this readily in order to please Allah and suddenly our Iman does begin to grow. We start doing things, difficult things, for the sole purpose of gaining Allah's reward and reading the Quran no longer seems to be a difficult prospect. Ramadan, the month in which the Quran was revealed, therefore becomes the perfect place to start to connect with the Quran and eventually make it a daily habit. Mm. So here are a few ways to start forging that connection with this incredible work, this Quran, taken from a beautiful blog called 10 Ways to Reconnect with Your Quran and Change Your Life. Um, we're maybe not going to talk about uh, uh, all 10, but just focus on a few that, well, that we think are really, really cool. I mean, the first and the most obvious, but the hardest is to actually pick up your Quran. <laughs> I mean, just start by that simple process. Take the Quran off the shelf. You make your wuzu. You do that with the intention of reading your Quran. You wipe the dust off it. You, uh, you keep our uh, Qurans on a, on a high shelf uh, normally. But instead of doing that, because that's out of sight, why not tr choose to keep it somewhere where you can see it all the time, somewhere where it's readily accessible. So uh, somewhere where you can see it and get hold of it 
any time that you need. So if it's in proximity, you're my, more likely to pick it up. Quran apps are also very, very good for this purpose. Okay, we can all get apps on our phones, on our tablets, on our laptops. And usually when we read the ayah on these apps, the translation is right underneath if you keep on scrolling. Um, now, sometimes we, I don't know, we may be, we may be, well, we may be asked too much of ourselves. Um, uh, many Muslims in Ramadan make the mistake of trying to do too much too quickly. Uh, we set targets like, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read one juz a day. I, I, I'm going to take all this in. And maybe we've not even been reading the Quran at all. Uh, for non-Arabic speakers like myself or new Muslims, uh, this is simply too much. And the, the stuttering and stumbling will no doubt frustrate and demotivate you. Um, I suppose my advice would be to start small. Start, start though, uh, just as Yusuf said, start, start small. Start reading, maybe five hours at a time. Reflect on the meaning, try and understand. When you have a habit of reading five hours after Fajr, for example, um, extend this to a further five after Asa and a further after Isha. Sure, you might still stutter and stumble, but persevere. As our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Verily, the ones who recite the Qur'an beautifully, smoothly and precisely, he will be in the company of the noble and obedient angels. And as for the one who recites with difficulty, stammering, stumbling through its verses, then he will have twice that reward. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad also said, whoever recites a letter from the book of Allah, he will be credited with a good deed. And a good deed gets tenfold reward. Now, he said, I do not say that Alif, Lam, Mim is one letter, but Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Mim is a letter. And don't forget that the rewards of any good deeds in Ramadan are multiplied even more. So start reading, start small, reap these rewards in abundance. One thing to bear in mind, the words of Allah are timeless. Um, we've given examples of, of that recently where we've been quoting from the Quran to do with what's happening today in these challenging times that we find ourselves in. So it's profound um, and maybe needs a little extra studying to understand the meanings behind them. When you've read your five ayahs in Arabic and with meaning, look up the tasfiyah, the analysis of those ayahs. This could be a, 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 a scholar on YouTube, or you may want to use one of the, uh, the, the Tasfiya websites to gain a deeper insight into what you're reading. It'll be eye-opening, eye-opening, as not only will it help you understand the verses themselves, but also how they relate to you and your everyday daily life. Try to see your reading of the Quran as a spiritual journey. That you're about to undertake. A, a fabulous trend right now is uh, Quran journaling, which involves studying very small portions of the Quran, maybe even just one ayah at a time, and making notes on what it means uh, when it was revealed and how you can apply it in your everyday life. I mean, you could even add how it made you feel and what other thoughts it may have triggered for you. There's a great Instagram page to follow. It's at Quran Journal, where there are some beautifully visual and colourful note makers sharing their Quran journeys. You could keep this even simpler and maybe just note down the verses that really resonate with you and speak to you. These are magical moments between you and Allah. So commemorate these moments and celebrate them. Mm. <coughs> and also share them. Uh, we as the two white Muslims want you to share. We want to share this Ramadan challenge with you. Uh, we're calling it the five I, the five ayah challenge. Uh, we want you to read, as we will be doing, analyse and make notes on five ayahs of the Quran every day this Ramadan. Um, then we want you to take a picture or maybe even do a small video of what you've learned each day and your reflections on your chosen 
ayers and share it with us all by tagging us at two white muslims so just tag us with the at two white muslims or using the hashtag hashtag two white muslims five ac dot to hashtag two white muslims so kind of you know let this beautiful uh, knowledge this this the wonder of this incredible religion in our beautiful Quran spread everywhere this ramadan we have the benefit of time we have the benefit of social media so we're in this surreal time of social separation let's reconnect with allah and stay spiritually connected to his words let's reconnect with each other in spirituality and knowledge and may allah reward us all for our efforts um inshallah inshallah alhamdulillah now before we go because we have uh, gone uh, our uh, full uh, 10 minutes and then some uh, as we uh, so often do we need to remind you to make um uh, a visit to www.tabby.net that's yes, t-a-b-i-e Dot net. Yes. This is the largest purposeful L entertainment platform uh, to to uh, to for you to view Islamic social cultural documentary. It's it's all about Islam. It's a site done in Arabic, English, and French. So mm -hmm. whichever of those languages you speak, you are well catered for. Yes. So www.tabby.net available at your fingertips <laughs> so Janaid, that just remains for us to say for this evening assalamu alaikum warakbatullahi wabarakatuh i've been Janaid rahim i've been muhammad yusuf bashforth and together we've been the two white muslims take <laughs> care and we'll <laughs> see you soon inshallah assalamu alaikum so we really hope you enjoyed that for the 21 video series, everything you ever wanted to know about Islam and the Muslim culture, but couldn't be bothered to ask, click the link in the top right of the screen. Also, please subscribe by clicking the red button below if you haven't already done so. We want to reach as many people as we possibly can. Thank you once again for your support and we'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.